Hi everyone, it's GigaBeef here, and today we're going to be looking at the 7N40 RAN. Now, I want to do a bigger video around this topic, but what's interesting about this new RAN that they've added is the minus 20 recoil statistic here. Now, what exactly does this mean? The game lists it as minus 20, and the wiki lists this as minus 20%, which it lists for everything in this buff category, which is interesting because minus 20 versus minus 20% actually makes a big difference as to the amount that it reduces on the weapon. And I've seen people arguing on both sides. As far as I see it, there are three ways in which that this could be done. I, the first one is that you just take your recoil and take 20 away, which would be the most simple answer, which is kind of what the game implies, just having no percentage there and just having a fixed minus 20. The second way that it could work is a percentage that's applied to the weapon's base recoil. This is how all the attachments work in EFT, so my initial guess is that this would be the same here in this particular case. The final way is that the weapon is in some kind of box for recoil calculations, and then the 20% is applied to whatever the end result is. Nothing else in the game works this way, so it seems unlikely, but you never know. The first thing that we want to do is check out whether this actually changes depending on what ammo you use, because I've seen some people saying that this doesn't actually happen and that it's not programmed in. So we're going to check that out first. Spoiler alert, it does actually function. But anyway, we've got a selection of rounds here. BP, which is our control round, which doesn't have any modifier on it at all. 7M40, which we said is minus 20. Egolnik, which is plus 15. So we've got a swing of 35 recoil from that round to this round. And then we have US, which is minus 25. So this is in a similar vein to 7N40. Now, the easiest way to go and check whether this is working or not is to take the worst possible recoil that you can for the caliber. And that's actually the AK-105. If you take off the muzzle and fold the stock, you get a 160 vertical recoil, which is actually the 105's base recoil. And this is worse than the others. This is worse than like the 74N um, and the other ones in that particular category. So we're gonna use this one to begin with. We're gonna label up our magazines, which you can actually tag mags now, by the way. It only is really visible when they're vertical, sorry, when they're horizontal which is a bit of a bit of a shame, but it's fine. We're going to use this to help figure out what is what. And we're going to start off with BP, which is going to be our control round. And then we're going to have some 7 and 40s. And then we're going to look at a Golnik, And that's the easiest way to get started. So we're going to jump into the hideout, which has got our lovely Christmas tree. We should probably change the lighting, actually. Before we start off on this, we'll enable the gas lamps so we can see actually what's going on. And we're going to take out our... AK, and we're going to run over to here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to change it over onto full auto, um, which it actually is already. And we're going to check what we've got in it. So BP is there, and we're going to start by firing two round bursts, effectively, of BP. And we're going to fire at this line. And we're going to see, because what this is going to do is minimize the amount of spray pattern stuff that we have to think about when the rifle is jumping up. So we're just going to see one shot and then another, one shot and then another. And that's going to be quite a consistent pattern, which hopefully will allow us to see exactly what is going on. So let's just start with BP and see what happens. Right, so you can see it's quite a lot of recoil. We've got it nice and controlled, so we've got a, a good line to sort of fix it on. Right, so the next one we have is 7N40. Now this should be significantly lower recoil. I'm only gonna move very slightly to the left, just so we have a very small difference in where the initial shot's going. But we should see a difference in recoil here by quite a significant amount. Okay, it didn't look like it was going to do it at first, but it is actually a difference in recoil, but it's not enormous, right? The, the change is not actually huge. Finally, we're going to have the Egolnik. We're going to put that in and see where that goes. All right, so as we expected, we have BP, which is somewhere in the middle here. We have 7N40, which is there. And we have a Golnik, which is up here. So something is happening. It's not like it's not working at all. Something is actually occurring, but it's not humongous, especially with this crazy recoil that we have with this particular weapon. The difference is not actually all that big. But now that we know that this is working, which is good to know, then we want to know exactly how much this is affecting it by. So we have our base AK-105 here, as we said, with 160 recoil points. If we unfold this, we get to 109 recoil. Now, if this worked like any other attachment, what you would do is you would take the base of 160 and then you'd apply the 20% to that, which would be 32 actual points of reduction. So you take this 109 and that would then reduce it down to 77. Now, what I've done is I've built another equivalent AK-105. You can see both these got 100% durability and that's all good. And this has 77 recoil. So these two things should perform identically if this one, the 109, is using 7 and 40 
And this guy, the 77, is using BP, which is our control round, because BP doesn't have any difference on it whatsoever. So we're going to put 7 and 40 in first, and then we're going to put the AK-105 with BP in second. We're going to see how that performs. Okay, so here we are again back in the shooting range. We've got 7N40 in the first one. We're going to stand a little bit further back this time just because it's slightly harder to see because the recalls are getting a little bit lower. So here we go. All right, and then we have the other one, which has got BP in it. And interestingly, we can see that it's not by much, but there is actually quite a difference between the two. Now, these two things should have been identical if the percentage thing was right, because this was 7N40 and this was BP. And there's a small gap. So 7N40 is actually underperforming what we would expect based on the gun builds, which means that the 32 recoil points is probably too much, which kind of leads us to believe that 20 absolute points, which is what is actually listed, might well be correct. So the only logical thing to do next is to make ourselves an 89 version instead, because if this is 109, then 89 should be the identical performance. Now I piece together something that kind of works. You basically just need to take the muzzle off, put the regular one back on and change this over to the shift grip and the aggressor, and then take off the butt pads. It's not necessarily the cheapest thing ever, given that I don't have max level traders, but this gets us to 89 and we're gonna keep our BP inside here. We're gonna go back to the hideout a second time. Okay, so we're back in the hideout and we've reset up our guns. This is going to be the 7N40 version and then we're going to fire the BP one. And we're going to, again, go from this distance so that we can get a good gauge of it. And I'm going to try and make sure that I am actually properly lined up because uh, it can be quite sensitive to that. So let's uh, let's go. Okay, so that's the first one. Over to the second one. Here we go. Right, and I would say that that is pretty much bang on, which does imply that it has a minus 20 flat recoil on it. This is pretty much the closest test that I could make to be sure that this is basically the same thing. For all intents and purposes, anyway, it acts as if it is minus 20, which is very, very interesting. So I thought that this was going to be in percentage, but it is in fact fixed, or so I can test to the best of my abilities. And this makes sense actually when we're thinking about it logically, because something like an AK-74N, this one is close to meta, but not quite because of the handguard and the stock. And this has 38 recoil. You can actually get this to 36. Now, if you ended up putting in those rounds and it was a 20% difference instead, the AK-74N actually has a base of 140, so it's actually a bit better than the 105, but that would mean that you'd be shaving off 28 points of recoil and you'd be getting this gun to eight recoil, which just doesn't really make sense. Also thinking about this for something like the AKM, I just whipped together a preset here which um, I don't think is necessarily the lowest recoil, but it's getting there. And this actually has 50 recoil. Now, if you were using US rounds, then that would remove more than 50 recoil from the weapon because it's minus 30% from the base. As you can see, the weapon's base is 189. If we do 189 times 0 0.3, that actually means that you'd remove 56.7 recoil from this weapon. So you'd end up with minus seven recoil, which doesn't make sense. So it does actually make a lot more sense, practically speaking, that you're going to end up with something that's just a fixed amount being applied to the weapon. And at least for 545, it does actually seem to function. Now I'm gonna do some more research about some of the others, especially the SMGs, just to see, which will be in another video. Then I'm gonna just show you some of the spray patterns for something that's very close to meta, i.e. this AK-74N, because it is quite interesting just how that actually plays out when full autoing, rather than just placing two shots down the shooting range. All right, so we're back again. We're gonna start by loading in a magazine of 7N40. So this is going to be the one that we've been looking at the entire time. We're going to have a look at the recoil pattern of this. And let's get started. This is just going to be on full auto. And this is with no mouse control at all. So we're just letting the gun go where it wants to go. The next one we're going to have in there is BP, which again is our control. This doesn't have any change of recoil based on the round itself. Get it lined up. Interesting. And finally, we're going to have a look at Igolnik.
There is one more round actually, which you may as well use it because I've, I've put a, a mag in for it. And this is the US rounds, which as I said, I don't think anyone's going to be using. This is slightly better than 7M40 for recoil. But only by a little bit. So what does this mean exactly? So this is 7 and 40. You can see the grouping is really, really quite tight. BP is interesting. You get this kind of spray up and then it comes back down again. And the grouping is slightly wider, which you'd expect. In Golnik, the grouping is actually atrocious. So, and this is what you'd expect to see if you have a difference between minus 20 versus plus 15. This is obviously quite a big difference, right? It's like a 35 swing in recoil on this particular weapon. We're going from minus 18 up to, what, 38 plus 15 is 53. So that is actually big and, that, you know, it makes sense given what we're seeing here. The final one being US, looks very similar to 7N40. It's very close, except for the fact that we have a very, very slightly tighter pattern. Interesting that we have some of these random spray rounds up here. I guess we have this too, and this is just kind of part of the, the upswing and then the return to normality. But you can see like Igolnik versus 7M40, the grouping on this is absolutely insane. And this is with a close meta AK. So if you can manage to get yourself some 7M40 rounds, this stuff is absolutely ridiculously good. It's super, super good. Not to mention the plus 50% accuracy on the round itself. So there you go. I think we've kind of figured it out for now. And as I said, I'm going to be putting together another video in the future on some other rounds for some other calibers, more specifically on SMGs, because I think that's maybe where it's going to make the most difference because those already have low recoils and some of those changes in fixed points can actually make quite a big difference, aka something like the P90 or the MP7, but we'll see.